Wendell Lee Well Services back at you again in today's video. Ooh. Still in a little bit of outlaw here. Video. Um, today's video topic for you today, we're going to talk with you about float switches. Yes, I know float switches are pretty boring. I know it's a not really a sought after topic for people wanting to research, but I got a little bit of a different float switch for you I'm going to talk about today. And that's this guy here. It's a square D version, similar to a typical pressure switch that goes on a submersible pump. We're going to get in that with you today. All right, so here we go. So you hold this up here so where y'all can see it. This is a what Square D refers to as their version of an open tank float switch. Now, I can hear it now. Y'all are saying, wait a second, the box is too small. There's not any wires in it. There's not a float on it that goes up and down. How's that going to work? So what I like about this, what's the old mantra? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's what Square D's done here with this. It's been around forever. But I'm gonna hold this up here. You see this? This just looks just like a standard pressure switch that operates a well pump. Uh, we got videos out there on a pressure switch about what a pressure switch is, how they work. Gonna put a link up in the video description for you on that. Hope you watch that. Smash the thumbs up button on that. Enjoyed it, got a bunch of use out of it. This is what I like. This design's been around for years and they haven't changed it. All right, so you still got, and give me a thumbs up, film man, if you can see what I'm doing. All right, that's good. So you still got the same design here. You know, you can, you can have your hot legs coming in here, your two wires to your motor coming in here to control a, a submersible well pump. Or if you've got a three-phase application, you know, you can use just one side of this. All right. But how this works is, I'm going to simulate it this way, actually like this. There we go. So when this level drops, pulls the points close. Pump cuts on. As water comes up, opens them. Water goes down, closes pump comes on, water cuts off, opens. Now, what I like about this design is this can stay out of the water. You can mount this on top of a tank and I'm going to simulate this with a simple bolt and nut. All right. So you don't have to have any wires down in the water. This is a simulated float that I'm using for in this video, all right? You can make this however long you want to, all right? As the water level drops, you hear that clicking. That's pushing the points together. Pump cuts on, water builds, water builds, water builds, water builds, cuts off. That's what I like about this. Not only is this a standard design that's been around for years, doesn't cost a lot of money, it's simple, it's easy to work on, but at the same time, you can keep your connections out of the water and use a simple ball float like this standard on a toilet that's been around for years. You can put whatever length of rod you want to on here to control however much water you want to control your storage tank to come up to, whether it's all the way to the top or all the way down at the bottom. It's just a simple mechanism, just a simple arm mechanism. It comes with some you know, mounting hardware that's on the bottom of the switch here, so you can mount this to whatever you want to mount it to. And leave your comments out there. I want to know how many of y'all have seen this before. Again, looks just like a standard pressure switch. You open it up. Wire is just like a simple pressure switch. Although the grounding screws over here instead of down on the bottom. But the concept's still the same. That's what I like about it. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Um, there's all kind of different applications out there for float switches, whether you've got a low yield well with a storage tank, 
whether you're wanting to fill up a storage tank and then gravity feed something down to the bottom of a hill. There's all kind of different uses for it. But still, nothing beats simple. Nothing beats reliable. And nothing beats cheap. Well, a lot of stuff beats cheap. But why is there a point to go expensive if you've got simple and reliable for a very affordable price? That's easy to work on, easy to understand. There's not a lot of moving parts. Therefore, there's very little chance of this breaking. On off, on off. Easy to work, easy to operate. So that's the point of today's video. You know, we install these. We've installed the older type float switches that have a ball on them. We've installed the electronic float switches that have a sensor on them and when water hits it, you know, they all work well. I'm going to quit rambling on here. I just wanted to show you a different option out there for you. Leave us some comments. Let you know what you think. Let you know if you like these. Let, you know, let me know if you've even seen them. Wendell Lee Well Services, thanks again for tuning in. Stay tuned for the next one.